gearing up to be a nice hot day. It's turned 11 o'clock. I've actually been out for a while since like, <laughs> like five, five o'clock, five thirty, six maybe something like that. Watching videos and doing all kinds of crap. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful bus. Beautiful engine block. Um, I contacted Mishimoto, sent him some photos. He uh, refunded me immediately. Apologized and uh, ordered a doorman off of Amazon and it came the very next day. So I've got that to put on. I went out and got me some oil pan nuts. It's a M6 1.00 thread pitch. Bada bing bada boom. These will be a lot better than my uh, those K series ones that were four inches long. So that'll be nice. That's a lot uh, the, more the appropriate length to the OEM. I grabbed uh, nine of these. <clears throat> there are 13 holes. I grabbed four studs. Boom, these little guys right here. Um, these ones I grabbed while I was there. It's for the uh, intake and the exhaust. Those are M8. By 100, I believe they were. Don't quote me on that, but that's an M8. That's a uh, M6 by 1.0. Um, I forgot to get a couple of these. I have a lot of nuts, um, but I forgot to grab some of these when I was down there. A little bit shell shocked on the price of this stuff. Uh, black hardware, 419 each. 379 for these. A little dinky local hardware store. Um, I got two of these acorn nuts. <clears throat> Probably don't even want to use them. The guy is that. As you can see, I've got a plate there. That, was, that came in. That was really nice. Got that off of eBay. Ordered it on Saturday. Came on a Wednesday. And it's gorgeous. Powder coated. Couldn't ask for better. Great communication. Can't miss them. Um, stuff looks just like that. It all looks just like that. Custom lettering and stuff. I squeezed in just under. And they did a beautiful job on this. So, um, yeah, it looks like it's thin, but it's not. Kind of space down here. It does bend a little. It's got a little bit of play to it, but I feel like once you get a nut on there, Gonna do that. I got this one here, and I already marked off the height of it, so now I can measure that. Take this guy off, and then cut off uh, that exact height from here up <clears throat> is all I need. So I'm gonna take that, measure from the base up, and then uh, cut off that top part, and this nut should sit nicely. Little stainless steel acorn nut. That's why they cost a lot. If I would have just got the normal one, it would have been $1.29 each or something. I don't know. Anyway, so I got uh, oil paint to put on. There's plenty of on the bond. I got a full tube here, plus uh, three quarters of a tube floating around here somewhere. And then um, I got some. I got my timing chain tensioner, safety pin with a uh, free tensioner with it. Uh, case, gasket, one of the chain guides, um, valve covers, the uh, spark plug tubage. I assume those fit, I ordered by part number. And the top chain guide, I did get the smaller one, I know I could have got the wider one, but I didn't want to mess with something that wasn't in there. Um, I would have preferred the wider one, but, um, I don't know. I just didn't think it, I didn't know if it would fit and I didn't want to mess with it. <clears throat> These are chain case bolts because mine didn't come, it only came with two of them. So, uh, this guy came with a cute little note. <laughs> Drew in the eyes. Great, cute little seller there. Notice. Um, 
haven't opened them up yet, but I assume they are just exactly what they are in the picture because it says it right here. Boom. Um, very dirty. Can't wait to get those open. I like dirty stuff. Uh, yeah, and water pump, which I pulled out the other one, compared them exactly, and they are the same. Sorry, the partner, but I already recycled the box. So I got lots to do. I got to sand that. Got to sand that. Got to clean that. Got to oil pan this, water pump it. Um, not sure if I'm going to paint it before I put the water pump on or not, but that's my goal. It's Saturday morning. Let's see what I can get done this weekend. <sighs> got a lot to do. And I forgot to mention, got myself a case. I might hit up the dashboard. It's got my new old stock um, timing chain. Worked it up against the other one. And it's uh, same thickness. Here's to have the, uh, the three marking ones I need. That one. There's another couple more in there. That one inside. But hey, I got some time machine stuff and my uh, soon be ECU brackets. That's a whole, whole long ways away. I just got a little cleaned up here and busted out some scrubby pads from in there. And she get some stuff tucked away. It's kind of cleaned up. Less mess, less stress. Got this stuff dug out. Still got to bring out the lower pillars. And uh, I'll scuff this stuff up. Get these floorboards nice and clean and whatnot. I have just pulled all of these uh, remaining parts, scrubbed them down really good, and scotch brighted them. Getting them ready for the paint, which I also have sitting out there. Um, yeah, just gotta figure out. Uh, my neighbor's dog walker just showed up, so I don't want to paint any of the parts I gotta dry and be. I don't want to paint all our cars there. Because <clears throat> I like her and she's nice, and I don't want to fuck up her car. <laughs> I actually polished her headlights one time, it was quite funny. I was out there buffing the car, and I'm like, hey, you want me to polish your headlights? Anyways, um, yeah, so I'm going to let those dry, and I'm going to paint those. Um, while that's drying, I think I'm going to pull the dashboard out of here and start getting it taped up. And somebody pointed out a comment in one of my videos about the beeping noise, and I'm pretty sure it was this thing. I didn't know what this did. I couldn't find the beeper before. I kept tucking this thing around, couldn't figure out what it was for, and then when I was watching the video to see what he was talking about, Every time I got closer to it, it got louder. And as I got farther away, or as I got louder, it got quiet, got closer. You know what I'm saying. Uh, so I'm gonna pop this dude open and see what actually is in there. Back inside with this guy, I got the uh, outlets taped off. I guess I missed a few, I don't know if I did that. Um, pulled off all the old Velcro. Uh, blew it off, filled up the compressor and blew it off really good. Um, not done with it. I just basically got the dirt off of it, taped up a couple connectors. As you can see, I still got a bunch of goo I got to get rid of from the Velcro. Not too worried about it because I have the really nice dash cover, uh, the velour or whatever it is. I can't remember. Um, looks really nice. I just gotta. So when I repaint this, you really see the difference in the original color there. When I repaint this. Going to need um, this all. There you go. And this. And those tabs. Then I'll be able to repaint uh, this guy, but then I'll be able to put the uh, new Velcro back on there. A little, put a little Velcro double sided tape kind of stuff on there all over the place and pat it down really good. That'll be nice. I even clean up my van. But, um, these guys out here are done drying. Got those staged. These ones I'm waiting on. I'm going to do the quick coat on these guys. Let them dry and then do these too. I'm going to try and find something to do in the meantime. 
really don't go, want to go over one can for this one, but I might putz around with some fabric and try and see what I can do as far as brushing it in with some of the, the rear armrests pieces that go right here. Well, they uh, right now, spray these guys down. That's why I carry mace on me. All times, straight in my pocket. That'd be pretty good for right now. Six pieces of trim and all nice up. Really like how matte that is. Really like how there's vinyl stuff being kind of sticky and wet. It kind of seeps in there. Almost like a plasti dip. And that 1K clear coat. Gave it a little bit of shine, but. finish but give it a little shine but nothing crazy it still looks all right but just I really like this mat burgundy mat I could just come in here okay so I decided to do it what the hell about it I scrubbed it off just got it all blowed out With the, um, I'll hit it up a little bit, but I'm really just concentrating on the stuff that the um, dash cover doesn't fit. So, yep, just uh, gonna do that. Alright, that was fun. Let's do that on real quick. Uh, wow, I didn't expect to get any anywhere near all that, all this stuff. Look at all the body parts in the engine bay. Got body parts all over. Ooh, that thing looks good. Do you like me the looks of that? Yeah. Swooping shots. Anyways. All right, what else? Swing this guy around to get a little bit of drying time. Figured I'd primer this guy up real quick. Primered it in an overshot a little bit. So I had to go back and respray it a little bit, but I don't know ever know. Ran out of clear cut, so I can't clear cut this. Whatever. But yeah, looks good. All sides and guns.
sheep or two here, I don't know what I was thinking. This one had a chunk on it. Pardon me. And these dudes. Chain case vaults. Got back from just out of town for a little bit, out of, well, out of country, and got some stuff in. Uh, nothing too crazy. Got a shift boot. Shift boot. I got my other arm there, so I'm ready for that. I got a little sticker. Um, a couple sensors and stuff. No crazy actual final coat. You got a 2021 Jaguar HTY. Um, be head studs, a little bit of overkill, but, um, might as well just do it and get it done with. Got a head, which I'm extremely disappointed in because it's, it says new and unopened. As you can see, it's not even the right thing. Then, uh, let's look at it. The lovely part, I don't worry about scratching it because it came scratched. It's got a bunch of schmutz all over it. Like it's been installed. I don't know why you can see it, but it's got scratches all over it. See like big chunks. So I was planning on uh, my head showing up at some point between noon and four. I doubt that. Probably be tomorrow. Being tomorrow's the 4th of July, I highly doubt that it'll be here tomorrow. So it'll probably be Friday or Saturday. Who knows? But, then I can start doing that. But in the meantime, I really do want to get working on this. Clean this spot out. Got it ready uh, for final sanding before cleaning it off and putting on my final coat. Um, while I'm doing that, I've got some stuff i got to clean up out here. And finish off. Um, Clean it out, just wash it off good, and then uh, get it ready for painting. This thing came out beautiful. It came out really nice. Can't tell if it looks good on camera, but it looks good in person. So I'm gonna be painting that stuff, washing and painting that stuff, and then I'm gonna come in here and do this stuff. One of these guys. <laughs> it's got the full pump. Uh, all the pigtails and stuff. Um, maybe I'll pull that out real quick and take a peek at it. You will notice the expert packing came in a grease laden box with a tiny layer of bubble wrap. Probably more tape, but uh, some people. I just got this dude out of there. Um, I kind of held it up to the other side of this thing here. Don't know how well that's going to fit against this, doesn't really seem to want to go on in any way. Um, I can figure something out later. I'm not sure if it's going to end up there. might end up somewhere else, but um, I like how these guys, that uh, painter's tape is going to hold the grease in. It's ridiculous. Why can't people just be <laughs> rude? Poor UPS guy. Anyways, um, yeah, so there it is, with all its uh, pigtail glory and uh, flare tips, etc, etc.
Hmm, yes. I have finished sanding. I have wiped it all down and I have cleaned it. I now have these coats um, that I'm going to put on. I uh, just did a little bit on the sides here to keep some of the spray down. Now the baby got my little fan going to the other one out back. I'm going to shake up these cans and uh, lay down some paint. Alright, just got this guy. Um, not quite blown off or washed off yet. Just got it nice and sanded down a little bit. Took the fingerprints down to smooth again. So hopefully that'll just cover up nicely. Get this thing is all washed off and ready to go. Um, basically ready to do that. Got the paint over here. I just don't want to do it right now. It's hot and my neighbors got their windows open, so I'll just wait until nobody's home. In the meantime, that means I gotta find something else to do. So this is the case it showed up in. The uh, VTC is right on the edge of that. It's probably one of the shittiest packaging jobs I've ever seen. Uh, let's see, let's look at the side here. It has been dropped, pushed as such. Almost zero hope for this thing. Absolutely ridiculous. I'm filming this because of the interactions I had with these people. And I was not happy. And I don't feel like this is going to be any kind of protected a little bit of fucking saran wrap right off the bat it looks bent flimsy cardboard at best Scratches. Supposed to be resurfaced. Well, this was supposed to be good and fun, but, um, yeah, it looks shiny. Um, the paint is really nice. Unfortunately, this is definitely the exact same engine head that I have. Um, tell by the lobes, 
the PNC. This is obviously a K28-3. Um, you know, say I'm furious about the way it was shipped. I don't really care about the way it was shipped because uh, I'm not keeping it. It's just going back. It's definitely going back. Um, there it is uh, on the other side here. I'm a total deal killer, but it's not the head I ordered. Uh, waited forever for it. Made pro I have the whole unboxing on tape, so I may choose to uh, post it or not, depending on what they do, but yeah. Absolutely ridiculous the way they sent this thing. Um, definitely be putting pictures in here. Uh, you'll see, it's. Uh, like I said, probably end up posting the whole unboxing of it because it's just so ridiculous how they ship this. It's just um, mind numbing. It's in Florida. All right, I think I'm ready to uh, start bombing some of this with some paint here. Fourth of July. Not sure when that stopped, but damn, did that stuff go on nice. The only time it messed up was when I put my finger in front of the nozzle. Uh, but even then, the block just blended in so nicely. Man, that looks just beautiful. Just beautiful. Finally, exactly what I wanted. <laughs> I'll let that tack up for a second. I'm gonna start hitting it with the engine enamel. What the?
debating on whether or not to do a third can. And then finally I just came to realization like I'm set up, I'm here, this is the only time I'm gonna get to do this. Not any time crunch. Why not? So here we go. Third can. It's a little weird on camera, but it's gorgeous in person. Still giant. I think that's going to be awesome. Two cans of the... Two cans of the base coat here. Um, can't praise this stuff enough. Especially, I mean, the bar was pretty low with the other company, but... Uh, the engine enamel, that stuff actually goes on really good. Do not hold it still. Do not hold that still. Uh, and real quick, you get a nice thick line about the size of your finger if you hold it for anything more than half a second. Um, Paint-wise, didn't concentrate too much on that. Um, gave a nice heavy coating of the clear coat. Tried to kind of you know, do my best. Alright, so, um, tried to, I just put these, cleaned them off really quick, and I put them on there just to get something to keep them, get them up there and going, but, uh, the paint started to twist on this one, so it stopped immediately. Um, I'm like, alright, just let it <laughs> chill, at least a day or two before I start slapping stuff on. I'm really excited to start slapping stuff on. Um, very ready, got lined up, ready to go. Just gotta do it. Uh, right now, this uh, cheap masking tape that's been on there and spray painted and sat there for months. Uh, didn't want to come off, so I just put a little wet paper towel on it, soak it a little bit, raise the blade right off of there. But uh, yeah, so now I'm trying to figure out what to do next. All right, so it's been about 24 hours, well, 24 hours. Since I've uh, painted this guy, I feel like I can start adding some stuff to it. Yesterday I did spend about four hours. You kind of see the before and the after there. I'm not sure what that is. It's a blubber truck. But I ended up getting this dude really clean. Uh, I'm not even done with it yet. But as you can see, and it takes a lot to get that off of there so getting a dish clean has really been a challenge to say the least. Still can't quite get down in there. Starting nuts but trying not to take the uh, gear assembly off. Shift to assembly so but that leaves me with 
some other things I can do on this guy today. Like uh, rev nuts, stuff like that. So I'm gonna figure out what I wanna get done and uh, set up for it. I got these guys tightened down pretty good there. Um, also put this guy and that guy where they're gonna live forever. So I think those look all right. It's a little off center, but it's not the end of the world. Barely got it down. <laughs> really sent that one home. Uh, broke out the old impact gun. Uh, Cause the bolt was lined up weird or it got hot during welding. So it didn't want to line up the threads correctly. So, all right up next, I think I got the uh, portion valve set up. I just got to get the nuts, nut cert set in there and uh, clamp them down. All right, brake boost. Brake boost. Brake portion valve is on. Um, looks like the paint got a little messed up there. Whatever. All right. Next thing is next. I right, put on the fuel pressure regulator. Bolts in for that guy. Um, I'm probably gonna have to take that off because I gotta get the boost brake in there and all kinds of stuff. So I know I already measured it out. I know that'll fit in there just fine. I guess I'm just gonna keep moving on with some other things. I got that guy on there. Um, you can see it's a little curved. I think it's still a little high. I'm trying to keep it. I got curved like that on purpose to try and keep it from going under the hood. I don't know. I might still need to have spaces. Just gonna have to see. I mean, I can still bring it down a little bit. I'm trying to keep a little bit of room for this. Supposed to go in here, but um, we'll see what's going on with that. As far as whether or not the hose will work or not. I think since last time I hit play, I think I record I had that thing installed, that installed, that installed. <coughs> I just done that. Put that guy on. So I wanted to put the pedal set on. So I put that on. I didn't realize I needed to put the pedal set on at the same time. So I went ahead and did that. And then uh, went to put the dashboard on and then realized I didn't put this thing on or the other squiggly piece that goes there. So I put those on and I put the dash on and then I thought, well, I'll put the heater in. But in order to get that guy back there, I needed to remove that post and the dashboard. And I realized once I got that thing, that part, the main heater box area, up there I realized that I need to deal with the fuel before I can deal with those. And uh, I also need to deal with uh, getting the transmission cables run through that hole, of which I was just looking at, and this it's just a little bit bigger than one inch. This is exactly what I believe I drilled my hole to. Uh, whatever my, I don't even know where it is at this point. Uh, this guy is, it's not quite enough. One inch, 25 millimeter. So I'm going to need to file, file it down a little bit with the, uh, Rounded out one inch file. Oh, excuse me. It is six o'clock and I've been down here since only noon, but I've been up since 7.30. I left the house to go to the bank to deal with some shit. So, but on um, this I got loosely thrown on there, which is my clutch, hydraulic clutch line which I got installed right here. Runs under the thing. I did this after I put the dash on because I wanted to see exactly where I wanted to run. And it runs perfectly right there. This is an EX, so it has a hole for the um, cruise control stuff. Which, I, it's a manual car, I don't know. Anyways, um, so you can see really jiggly. A little loose. I need to get, get a buddy helping hand. Um, 
so yeah, it's basically, I did a bunch of stuff and then pulled a bunch of stuff off and I've got all the bolts and all the nuts and stuff figured out so it'll be easy to throw back on. I literally just need to run those fuel lines and make the holes a little bit bigger for uh, the transmission cables to sneak through. And then I am off to the races. But it is also like 90 degrees outside and I'm tired and I'm hungry and um, it's even hotter inside this car. It's probably like 91. Um, but yeah, it's really coming together. I got a bunch of stuff kind of thrown on here today. Excited to see where tomorrow brings. Um, probably heartache and pain. Maybe a little blood. And next day. Just as beautiful as yesterday. Mm. Trying to get some stuff done before it gets hot again. Alright, so I went ahead and just did this guy. Did that. Oh, sure. Let's see that. Just uh, jot straight out the side here. Um, this is my vent to atmosphere. Just gonna run right out here like this. Same, same hole, and then run along down <clears throat> somewhere out yonder. Uh, mocked up. I don't have the rib nuts in for this yet, but uh, that's basically where it's going to be. As you can see, it's not quite lined up. So, um, either bend the frame or bend the mount or something. As you can see, it just kind of swoops up and in. It's going to be my fuel delivery, and then it's going to just kind of Shoot right up here in the fuel rail. See the fuel rail. Cross into here. Shoot out back down over there. Of which I already went and put my fitting on that guy as well. So that bad boy is pretty. Pretty to get it down. And uh, yeah, just gonna keep chucking on this fuel line stuff so I can start getting the interior back in. I got a bit of, just shut the 90 up going out, and then it comes out yonder, and this one comes out here, and wraps around in here. Let's put this on there for, make sure I have clearance issues, if anything got to tie me up. So they get back, I don't know who sent that. So yeah, I'm just gonna figure out where I need to cut it right here. And I'll have that one done. All right, had to redo this one. Um, kept uh, fraying and I couldn't get it to um, get on there. So I had to redo that one. That was a bit of a nightmare. Uh, still haven't got this tip off. Managed to get the other one off. Sucks at focusing. You don't want to focus and it's right there, huh? Oh, well, anyways. Got that guy done on there. So there's my return line. Um, I just cut it extra long here, depending on how I want to route it. Such a, this is the supply line, obviously. Um, this guy is literally just hanging out there. My, my, I plan on putting an M7 in there, but then my thing doesn't come with an M7 mandrel, so I'm kind of screwed in that department. But depending on how I want to route this, um, basically just gave myself a lot of extra line on this guy. So, with the exception of the fuel rail being in place, um, fuel is pretty much done, which is awesome. It's good to see. Glad for that. Nice quick look inside at what I did here. Just ran a 90 degree straight down that tubage. Uh, had I thought about it a little bit more, I probably could have got it out of the old clutch cable hole, which is where I was planning on putting the uh, clutch cable hole. Which is where I was planning on putting the return line, but if you look, oh! In hindsight, 
I realized that after I remade the second one, but that would have come out here perfectly and just dropped right down. Over out of here perfectly and dropped straight down. Just fine. But no, I didn't think about it. And you can see how this, how close this is to that. So, the turn line's gonna have to come back in here. Either under it or over it, probably under it. Such. All right, threw a couple of quarter 20 rib nuts in there. Just gonna throw that guy in there and see what happens. Didn't want to fit, so I had to cut a hole. Um, way behind that is the fuel line. The black thing you're seeing is the back side of this blue stuff. Um, I decided to seal that off. Um, keep the fuel out away from the heat water. Not that I think it'll really matter. Um, this heater did not like the uh, padding at all, like at all. So I had to um, really kind of finagle it on there um, by cutting away some of that. Um, in there, I was able to push it back another, like another inch. But then um, getting it on up here, it fought me pretty good. That bolt and that bolt. And I had to cut more off even over here to squeeze. I thought I cut a lot off, like too much. Turns out I cut like just enough off. So, there we go, that guy's back in. Wasn't sure about that for a minute. I had to think about life without heat, but it's in there. Well, I'm in here, this is my reserve hose line. I'm not sure where I'm gonna run it yet. I gotta buy a fitting. It'll fit this guy. Probably be somewhere up here. Right now I'm just kinda taking this bar on and off trying to get it fit that thing, but I got plenty of room here. Give myself plenty of room. Even if I need to do a 90 degree right there. Good, even if I wanna do a big huge loop. Good. So that's good. Gotta tighten this down. Still gotta get in here and tighten that down. Um, throttle cable I can wait on. I might hold off on putting the dash on for quite a while. I don't know. I say that, but you know, 20 minutes later the thing's on. So I'm gonna just keep keep uh, buttoning stuff up here. Keep trucking on. Well, I had to take that back off again. This off in order to get that back off. In order to get cables through, I was just blocking the one, but pulled out the old reamer, ram, reamer matic, reaming that thing some haulage. So, yeah, got that done. I was trying to get these dudes in here. I even thought this was undersized for these, so I grabbed this dude. Give it a little jingle jangle so I can get the centerpiece through. But that doesn't even fully extend it here. If I go any further, this thing's gonna yeah, come right off. Even fully extended, that thing doesn't, it only comes like right here. It needs, it needs to come, it comes like right there. And it's like resting sixth or fifth or whatever. So, and this one does the exact same thing. Uh, I have to have it all the way inside here in order for it to even reach the farthest post back before exercising the situation. So, I don't know, I got some reading to do. Either I bought the wrong, I think I bought the wrong cables, or I'm looking at it wrong. Or they sell them backwards or something, I don't know. Who knows? But uh, I think I've done enough for a day. I've spent my six six thirty. I spent my eight hours down here today. Yeah. Until tomorrow. Alright, it is the next day. Just down here putzing around with this. Can't let it out of my head. This really doesn't like to stretch over that way. <laughs> it's 
So I was just thinking, I can't tell if I got the right thing or not. I'm pretty sure I, I did, but then again, I'm kind of sure I did. So the only way to really tell is by kind of mocking up the transmission. So I guess that's what I got to do. Well, I, I tried. Ugh. That's the only thing I got to do. <laughs> if you can hear. So, <laughs> that's literally it. So, I'm pretty sure the cable side up, and you can see loops up around. This thing's as long as all hell. I think they meant for the tall shifter or something else. But, uh, yeah. If they don't work at this distance, they really ain't gonna work when I get them closer. So, I'm gonna go ahead and take them off. It's good to mock them up and find out now. It just sucks because I can't. I can't put away the heater stuff because that shit's hitting me. So, I figure that out. It's gonna be priority number one as far as ordering and getting taken care of because right now that's nothing holding me up from putting the. Uh, the only thing holding me up from putting the heater core stuff back in. Alright, now I gotta figure out something else to do. I'm gonna take this apart. I'm trying to get the brakes in, but I'm having trouble with the self tapper. Um, it hit like a wall. It was too long. It hit a wall back there. And I think I got it right on like a T bar or something. There's a little thing that sticks out that's on the inside. And I think I got it right on the metal of it so I'm kind of screwed if I had gone a little bit either way I'd be fine but no I had to go right there and of course it's hidden so now I'm gonna have to go rib nuts I have enough to do the rib nuts but I don't have anything to put in the rib nuts so I'm gonna go ahead and drill out some holes and put in some rib nuts Sunday night, time for me to call it. What did I get done? I got the uh, brake lines reinstalled here. Um, going to the appropriate housings. Down there. Such. Um, went around down here, I got the uh, brake boost on the bottom side. Change it up a little bit. Right? Uh, as for the fuel, I got that coming out behind the heater box here. Um, the original fuel one. Um, just cut the little angle. Let's see. Looks good though. Comes down. This is the vent atmosphere, which used to be the charcoal canister. Uh, I'm gonna cut that as soon as I figure a good spot to put it. That fuel line goes into the filter. Okay, it pulls it on nicely. The wall here. Into the inline, of which I gave myself plenty of maneuverability. Um, I could probably even go down and then come back up. Something, I don't even know. Plenty of room there for intake into the fuel rail, is where it will come out. So this guy, which I also gave plenty of room to, so that can do whatever it needs wherever that needs to go. There's a vacuum so I choose to hook it up. I just had extra tubage from the vent to atmosphere. Anyways, pressure regulator. That guy's on there. Um, shoots back the return, the fuel return. It's in here and clips into there. I'll show you the inside of that in a second. Uh, I got the brake booster back on. Um, master cylinder. Which I may or may not take off to bleed. Probably will. Did hook up the heater selector just because it was just another thing I could put on there. I added this block off plate. Something I found online. It's for like an EG or an EK. 
cave for over here for something, but we're, we're good enough for that. Had to cut the lip off the back of it, but it looks perfect right there. That's where my main wire harness is gonna go in. I haven't installed that bracket yet. Probably should do that before I fill up all Blake fluid, which I'm in absolutely no hurry to do. Um, I think that this is the clutch. Obviously it goes to the slave right there. Somewhere in here. This was just, I mocked up the uh, um, cables, but they didn't work. The shifter refused to move. So, um, I gotta figure out different shifter cables. Which I think I know where I made my mistake. Luckily it's not an expensive one. Um, got this guy on there going in there. I'm gonna show you the inside of that one. Down here. Comes in, I still got the wrench zip tied on to it. Make it nice and tight. That worked pretty good actually. So that goes across over here on this, which you need to tighten down. Um, so that just comes in over that. I didn't see any issues. I did already put the dash back on to double check that it would fit. It did fit fine. There's no pinch points or anything. Um, so the reservoir tank comes in over here. Plenty of room for a loop around, or if I just want to do a quick 90 or 180 right there. Um, let's see what I feel like doing. The room I got, it's probably going to be a 180 fitting on there. Um, I just got to figure out an adapter. Uh, this is, I don't know what it says on there. <clears throat> a and something. I don't know if it is A and actually. It doesn't look 37. Um, yeah, like I said, I got the. Uh, the brace back there, extra bracing. Come on, I'm gonna focus. Yeah, it's got that brace back there. You got that brace right here. Let's see how those work. With each other <clears throat> for extra strength on this hydro cable. This is spring rubbing. I was like, what is that? It's easily fixable. Um, I did get all this stuff installed, but I had to take a bunch out to get it all back together. Basically, just did some inside stuff. That's what that plate looks like. On the inside, I put uh, some blue dampener on the inside of that as well to get it. Uh, Dampened, dampened. So there is blue stuff sandwiched in between these two guys. Um, I'm hoping I can still use these. If not, I'm gonna have to figure out either something to do with the grommets that I got for them. Oh, let me just fall backwards. So get these guys. Those cables do not fit. Say my hand, so. <sighs> well, that's where I'm ending this one because I have a feeling it's gonna be a bit before I can do anything. I gotta order new cables. Uh, see if I can still use them. Those are really long. I thought I'd be able to snake, but they snake way over and then snaked way over and are hard to get through there and that's just mocked up just a few inches off the ground you know so it's not any kind of real thing I just kind of got it in the area where it would be but did not want to work at all and I had to finagle the ends of these quite a bit in order to get them to um, stretch out enough as to where I could see the thread there and a lot of thread on there <clears throat> Still didn't get it to work, so I gotta deal with that. But that's where I'm at. Stuck here until I get cables. I think it's the last thing before I can start installing the um, heater core stuff fully. I'm um, waiting on head resolution, cables. Um, other than that, I'm getting really close. I need axles and exhaust for starters. And then uh, a little bit of wire harness work, and I'm 
95% of the way to turn the key. So. Alright. 